Good afternoon. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm Phil Falcone with my co-host Jeremy Ricci here at WWDB 860 AM Studios, <coughs> high atop the City Line Avenue skyline. Every Thursday at 3 o'clock and every Saturday at 6 p.m. If you want to ask us a question or you have a real estate need, give us a call at 267-988-2000. Addicted to real estate, what do we do? We love to buy houses. If you have a house for sale and you want to give us a call, we'd love to make that an easy transition for you. Just give us a call at 267-988-2000. If you're a real estate agent... Or if you're a realtor, that's right, there is a difference. If you'd like to learn about that, give us a call. We have three agencies, one in Montgomeryville, right on 309, one in Hatboro at the corner of Byberry in York, and one in Huntington Valley on Buck Road. Three locations in Montgomeryville, in the Montgomery County area and in Bucks County. We also do investor and realtor education meetings every month. You can find out about this at AddictedToRealEstate.com. Just go to the website, AddictedToRealEstate.com, put your name and email address in, and we're going to send you an invitation to come to our next meeting. And we have a whole group of meetings planned in August, in September, and in October. You don't want to miss it. Also today, we have a guest with us, Steve de Blasio. What's happening, Steve? How are you, Phil? I'm excited to be here. Jeremy, what's up, man? Just, just living the dream, man. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to going down to Florida pretty soon and uh, buy some more deals down there. So yeah, we could talk today about our new uh, our new acquisition in Florida. That'd be a topic I think a lot of people will be interested in hearing about. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. And we're going to talk to Steve too. He's going to tell us a little bit about some of the things he's doing in the real estate investing business. I think you guys will find it real interesting. So what about questions? What do we uh, have for questions this week? Several questions. If you guys have questions, you can email them to phil at addicted to real estate.com. That's phil at addicted, the number two, real estate.com. And first question today, is it better to buy in an LLC or a trust? So somebody's looking to do some entity structuring. We'll discuss that. What's the first step I should take to be an investor? We need a little clarification on that. You can be a real estate investor. You can be a private investor. There's all sorts of different investors you could be. Stock investor. Ooh, we don't want to do that. No. Does addicted to real estate buy homes the traditional way? I don't know what you mean by traditional, but we'll delve into that as well. So after we come back with the questions, we'll have our main topic. Good real estate deals come to those who wait, not to those who wait too late, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> Also, we're going to be uh, giving away some real estate investing business secrets. So come and get it. All right. So stick around as we discuss uh, these topics and much more. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio, and we'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. 
Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the Internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hi, I'm Larry Steiners, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. So in this segment, we're going to go over the questions that were emailed in. You guys can always email in questions at phil at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, phil at addictedtorealestate.com. So, Jeremy, let's get right into it. What's our first question? First question, is it better to buy in an LLC or a trust? Well, you are clearly the expert on that topic, so why don't you answer that question? No, I'm going to say both. And the reason I'm going to say both is uh, we, we typically buy all our properties in trust, and we use a different trust name for each property that we buy, so it kind of isolates each property. But the behind that trust, the owner of that trust, I, I, I've always used an LLC. And uh, the LLC, in my opinion, gives me the liability protection that I'm looking for. The trust gives me the anonymity so that we don't have, um, we don't have these properties affecting each other. And, and the other thing is um, it it just avoids, uh, you know, somebody wants to look up your name on the public records and see all the properties you've bought that you own today, not only the ones you own today, but any property you've ever bought, they could see your whole transaction history on the MLS, on the public records. Yeah. And you know that's one, one reason we like to use trust and, and make a new one and then blow it up when we're done. Yeah, you know, I first figured that out when I uh, got my real estate license, and at the time... Um, I attended a class on how to use Trend. It was one of the first things that they taught you. And Trend is the MLS in this area, in case you guys don't know. And the uh, teacher of the class says, yeah, put in somebody famous's name. So I put in Alan Iverson's name, and I could see every house he ever bought, what he paid for it, what it looked like before he bought it, what he sold it for, uh, what kind of mortgage he had on it, a lot of critical information that was available to me, and it took me all of like 30 seconds to find it. And it made me start thinking, geez, could people do that to me? And considering that I'm a real estate investor, I'm addicted to real estate, somebody, if all you owned was real estate, somebody could go through, find out everything you've ever owned, everything that you still own, everything you owe on it, they could easily calculate what your net worth is. I certainly don't want that to become public information. So that's one thing that a trust does uh, beautifully for you. And it, when people are starting out, I don't recommend that they, on their first deal, open up an LLC. Of course, you know, we're not attorneys. We can't give you particular legal advice. You should seek an attorney for that. But I will say that uh, if somebody's just starting out, there's an expense involved in setting up an LLC. There's also an expense involved in maintaining an LLC, filing a separate tax return for the LLC. In Pennsylvania, even if you have a single-member LLC, which means you are the sole owner of that LLC, 
the, the federal government doesn't require you to file a tax return, but Pennsylvania State requires that you file a mock-up tax return as if you filed a te- federal tax return so that they can bill you, you know, the tax rates of Pennsylvania. So the LLC is kind of like the second level of protection. Really, the trust kind of helps nobody be able to find that property that you just bought if something happens. Exactly. Um, but then if for some reason they were able to find who you were and that you own that property through that trust, then now it's backed up in an LLC too, right? So that would further protect you against liability once – if they were to be able to find you. Yeah, the LLC is the limited liability right. company. That's the one that protects from liability standpoint. The trust is basically where somebody can Google my name or put mm-hmm. my name into public records and say, what does this guy own? Or, or let's let's take it the other way. Let's say one two three Main Street. Who owns one two three Main Street? Well, the Main Street Trust. Right. What else does the Main Street Trust own? Nothing. That's it. Yeah. Just that one property. So it gives you that kind of anonymity. That that. Uh, yeah, I always thought it was great because let's say somebody trips and falls at your property, right? So that person goes to an attorney, and then the attorney tries to look up who's the owner of that property. Well, it's in a trust, so they don't really know who. The owner of that is so ninety percent of the cases are just going to go away because the attorney can't find you, right? But the ten percent who can actually find out who the owner is, then they find out who the owner and the owner is actually an LLC, and then it's further protected by being in the LLC. Yeah, the first thing is just to run your business right and to not get mm-hmm. people mad at you and not have uh, <laughs> sidewalks that are tripping hazards. <laughs> okay, but, but that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. Even if you're the most honorable businessman in the world, like moi, uh, things still happen. You know, yeah. you, you run across people who uh, have anger issues or they're a little bit nutty or they have listening uh, liabilities and they appear that, to think that something else has occurred in the business deal other than what has. Things happen. Well, the other thing I'll say is if, you, if you're if you looking to protect your assets, the first thing is is to assemble some assets. So yeah, there's agree. a lot of people that set up, pay all these fees to set up a corporation or an LLC or this multiple LLC structure where they do a, a Wyoming LLC or a Nevada LLC and a Delaware and have all this complicated hierarchy of stuff when they don't have anything to protect. So the first thing is to do your first several deals, get some assets, and then once you have assets, you, your, your entity structuring then can – evolve from that yeah yeah so the, what, what we do here just in summary is everything that we buy we buy in a trust so every piece of property that we buy has an individual trust created for that one property and then the beneficiaries of that trust could be any one of a number of different things it could just be us it could be an llc it could be an s corp it could be a c corp it could be whatever we want it to be and uh, you get to change it. If you need to change it, you can change the uh, the beneficiaries or whatever else needs to be done. So um, why don't we move on to our next question, which is, what's the first step I should take to be an investor? Ha! Huh. I'd say read a book would be a good first step. Uh, listen to a radio show would be a pretty good second step or a first step. Listen to a, a YouTube show. TV show, say like the one that I like, which is called Addicted to Real Estate TV. You can find it on YouTube, and that is a uh, that is a great way to get knowledge. That's how I obtain all of the knowledge I possess on anything in life. For example, this weekend I was looking at my basketball court, and it looks like it could use a cleaning, and the concrete's getting a little dirty. And I went to uh, the University of YouTube. And I simply put in, how do you clean a concrete basketball court? And now I have about 1,200 videos that I need to watch on the subject to become an expert. So Go to meetings and network with people, too. That's a great way to, uh, to get involved in the business. There's, there's um, a lot of things that you can do to get started. And the first one is to, to hang around with people that are already doing it. Yeah, a lot of research. You can do a lot of research to kind of get the juices flowing and learn, you know, the bulk of what you got to do. But all those details, it's always been for me. You find somebody who's already doing successfully what you're looking to do, and then you you link up with them and become a part of that. And even if you take a part of that deal, how can I be involved? How can I help you? And we can do a deal together, and maybe we could both share in that. And then you can actually learn the right way to do it while you are making money. And there's a traditional way. I mean, there's there's a there's a way that you can – there's all sorts of things you can do as an end result of real estate. You can be a landlord. You can buy 
fix up and resell. You could uh, wholesale properties. But all those things have one thing in common, and that is they first start with a purchase, right? So you have to get good at buying first. Mm -hmm. And buying requires finding good deals. So finding good deals, whether you're a wholesaler, whether you're a rehabber, whether you're a landlord, is step number one. So a lot of people start out just being a bird dog, and a bird dog, they will, they, what they'll do is they'll just uh, go out and look for opportunities and pass those opportunities off to an investor. And then as they get better and more skilled, they can actually get those opportunities under contract, and then they become a wholesaler, and they wholesale it to a landlord or to an investor, or a, a flipper. And then at that point, they might decide that they want to learn the construction and take on the flipping or the rehabbing in order to own for keeps themselves. So it's kind of a progression and uh, I would say starting out finding opportunities and turning those opportunities into deals is a way to get started. Just like anything, I think there's a, a huge learning curve to anything you want to learn, right? So in the beginning, you, you look to get involved and start to learn that path with the least amount of risk, you know, kind of get in where you can start learning these things. But when you do make mistakes or as you do make mistakes through that learning curve, it's not detrimental to you and not something that's going to crush you. You know, so you you look into how do I become involved where I can share in something and learn about it, but when I do make that mistake, it's not gonna it's not gonna make the end all be all. Okay, how can they find out about our next meeting, Phil? Uh, our next meeting is coming up. We have one meeting in um, August scheduled. I believe it's August seventeenth. It's at our office in Hapero. You can check it out at meetup.com. But the best way to find out everything that we're doing, we have a, a whole gamut of different types of meetings that we're scheduling in the, in the future in the next 90 days. Make sure you go to our website, addictedtorealestate.com, put your name and email address in there so we can send you out a personal invitation to everything that we're doing. It's a, it's a great list. I only send something out to the list about twice a week, so we won't bother you too much. And it always comes with important information about what, what Addicted to Real Estate is doing. So um, if you're interested in becoming a part of our company, Addicted to Real Estate, if you're a real estate agent or if you're a realtor or if you're an investor, you can always do that by contacting us at 267-988-2000. You know, we, we have a whole gamut of real estate investors, real estate agents, and realtors who are affiliated with us through our agency or through our education company. And you can really pick up and learn this business a uh, very accelerated way if you hang around with Addicted to Real Estate. So our last question is, does Addicted to Real Estate still buy homes the traditional way? Traditionally, I would say the, the traditional way is all cash, right? <laughs> Or well, the, the new it, traditional way is to go out and finance yourself out to the hill. That's, on, your, on that's your traditional way yeah, now. Right. But I think uh, I think what this caller was talking about is the traditional way is: Are you buying through FHA or conventional financing to buy your homes? Uh, yeah, I think what they clearly meant was: Let's call a real estate agent. Let's have them, uh, you know, find us a property and let's buy a property that's uh, out there for the whole public to see, and let's get a bank to finance it. But but I agree, you know, what Jeremy's saying is that the traditional way, long before the that way, which we'll call the conventional way, the traditional way was that probably seller financing or or cash. Yeah, I mean, imagine when somebody uh, uh, bought a farm from a farmer and they chopped off a piece of land. What did they? They usually paid them in livestock, or they paid them in the uh, the crops of the of the fruits of the labor of that land. But yeah, I mean, I I think the way that deals happen is to is to look at the traditional way and, and compare that to what are the other options. And if you can be creative in the way that you structure deals, you'll get more deals. I think that I've never, personally, I've never gone to a bank to get a loan to buy a house. I've just never done it. I've mm -hmm. always found deals uh, also off the market. We've Phil and I have bought deals together where they were on the market, but that was pretty much right after the crash when, when I start, first did that. And that was because there's a lot of bank-owned properties and there was a lot of... Um, opportunities that were on the market and there wasn't enough buyers for all those opportunities. Whereas in a hot market like today, it's tough to find deals on the MLS that are good. Uh, you, you know, I was thinking about it. You bought a property. We bought a property off the MLS in 2015. We bought that uh, Hampton Crossings Jacksonville Road deal. That, that We bought that condo off the MLS. It was a subject to deal, but right. we bought the com condo off the MLS. So, so I, uh, to answer the, the listener's question, yeah, we – 
we still do buy homes the traditional slash conventional way, but it's not the best way to buy a house. The best way to buy a house is to buy a house with none of your own money. And I just happen to have written a book called How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money, right? And you can check it out on Amazon. It's going to be released hopefully this week um, on Amazon, and I'm going to be putting it out for free. So to get a little spark and to get some comments and to get some thumbs up, and if you're looking for a free book, it'll probably be out this coming weekend. And if you just go to Amazon.com and look for How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money, you should be able to pick up a copy of the book for free. If you're on my mailing list that I've mentioned already a couple of times, go put your name and email address in at addictedrealestate.com. I will definitely remind you to go get your free copy of a book. So that's the best way to get it. And I think um, also that when he's talking about do you buy homes in the traditional way, there's really two factors there. The first one is do you traditionally buy them through the MLS, right, through the realtors and all the things like that? So that's one way, and I would say mostly no. You know, it, the best deals usually come from finding the direct sellers themselves and doing some kind of marketing. So that seller says, "Hey, you know what? I'm going to call this guy," and you can usually work out a better deal that way. The second thing is, do you buy homes in the traditional way? That would be more like, do you get the financing? And the answer is mostly no to that one too. Just like Phil explained. Subject two, we bought that deal traditionally through the MLS, but not traditionally through how we financed it. And that's, I think, what your book covers in detail about how not to be traditional in how you're going to buy things and how you can get in and you can buy those things and, and control those assets with really none of your own money. We traditionally well, like to make money. <laughs> that's the traditional part of it. Well, we're definitely not traditional, conventional guys. So stick around as we're going to discuss... Good real estate deals come to those who wait, not those who wait too late. So you definitely want to hear that conversation. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS number 210764, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, by investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. 
I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7700. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. And now for our main topic, we're going to talk about real estate deals and timing that real estate market and good deals that come to those who wait, but don't wait too late. So where do you think we're at now, Phil, in the Philadelphia market? Well, I think timing the real estate market uh, wherever you invest is, is a critical thing. And when I look back at the last crash, which really started, uh, if you read my first book, Addicted to Real Estate, I believe it started on um, Labor Day weekend of 2005. I began to see chinks in the armor at that point. Things started to slow down. I had some houses for sale at the time. And I started to notice that something felt different. Even though I was probably two and a half to three years ahead of what was happening. That's one of the things I love about the real estate business is, you know, stocks can lose 25% of their value in one afternoon. Real estate moves pretty slow. So if you're paying attention, you're going to figure out uh, what the real estate market is going to do. And there's lots of ways that you can pay attention. But what I did in 2006, so so after the Labor Day weekend in 2005, I started to know, l- learn that things were slowing down. I decided to start selling off some of my portfolio. I had a bunch of Philadelphia properties. I had equity in many of them. I sold half a dozen properties in 2006, another half a dozen properties in 2007, uh, and I also started transferring some of my real estate into larger commercial pieces. And it was a, a gutsy kind of move, but what I was thinking at the time was if I could sell a bunch of houses and convert those houses into a much bigger deal, like a apartment building or like a retail shopping center or like, a, or like an office building, I could then... Um, withstand whatever crash was coming because I would have had greater cash flows. And uh, I I looked at a bunch of different deals that I wrote about in my book, Addicted to Real Estate. You can actually follow the story in great detail as to what I went through during those years between, say, uh, 2003 and, and 2008. And wh- what I ended up doing was I ended up buying this this office building with 47 units in it. And I actually sold four houses in order to buy this office building. And just like when you play Monopoly where you trade in four houses to get a red hotel, I traded in four houses to get a maroon office building. And two of those houses were actually green. One of them had a green garage door with green shutters. And one of them had like lime green siding on it. So it was a brick building with like part siding on the top half. So I like to tell people, yeah, I I did a real deal where I sold four green houses and bought a red hotel, a a maroon, (laughs) wasn't a red hotel, but it was a maroon office building. At the time I bought the place, it had a tremendous rent roll. I couldn't even believe that they were selling it to me. It's a great story. It's called Executech Suites, and you can read all about it at Addicted to Real Estate, in the book Addicted to Real Estate. The other thing about this uh, market timing is it's different market to market. I mean, I, I have a friend that's in uh, Denver, Colorado, and he says they're just jump bidding way over asking price that people are, are bidding like crazy and they can't, you know, the inventory is shrinking and buyers are just, it's yeah, it's really a seller's market. Did it give you a reason why? I think it was uh, mostly the job startups in in the economy. It's a very trendy uh, area. 
there's uh, a lot of people moving in for tech jobs. It used to be Silicon Valley was where the tech jobs are starting up. Probably moving in because there's some new regulations and there's things that regulation. are yeah, deregulation. <laughs> yeah. Things that are now legal, right? There's yeah, there's there's definitely recreational uh, pot smokers, but there's also uh, medicinal uh, reasons why people go out there because of that. I, I I've read stories on the internet <coughs> or, and and watched videos on the internet about people who have children that have in anxiety issues and marijuana is helping their children and they they got them out there uh, you know for that reason so there's yeah. definitely a lot of those stores popping up that I heard from him that he said there's more uh, more of these uh, dispensaries there than there are uh, Starbucks so but I don't know if that you know I don't know how much that has to do with the real estate market I, I think it's more because of of people the younger millennials moving into the era for the lifestyle they want to be near the ski slopes they want to be where the jobs are and denver's a nice place i don't know if you've ever been out there but it's it's a great, great can city. you jeremy or or phil can you go into a little bit more you say good real estate deals come to those who wait but you know i've always kind of heard the early bird gets the worm so what do you what's the dichotomy there what do you mean by that okay well well timing of the real estate market means a lot to me right? it, we're right now just talking about when we sell things, but also when you buy things is critical. And although we think of real estate as a long-term buy and hold business, there is in, in markets like beach markets or possibly in Colorado, I really don't know. Let's talk about a market that I know a lot about, Sarasota. Uh, and you can relate some of this to the Jersey Shore for people who buy at the Jersey Shore. When at the top of the market – when we were experiencing 25% increases year over year in Philadelphia, they were doing 100 in Jersey. And then when things tanked in Jersey, same thing. It was quadruply as bad. Whenever, when it went yeah. down, it went down like crazy. And we're seeing that same thing in Sarasota right now. Prices just are pushing to the limit. And there's a lot of talk down there amongst the really intelligent investors, not the regular average Joes. They're not saying anything about it because they don't know it. But the experienced guys are saying there's a correction coming. Now, not a major one, not a top-of-the-market correction. We know one guy who thinks it's going to be 30%, no worse than 30%. We know another guy who thinks it's going to be a 10% correction, which is really nothing I'm even going to care about. But it's We've had a, We had an upsurge, 25% year over year for the last two years down there. So yeah. that's been – that's been we, we, we joke around. We're saying we think it's horrible because it's harder to find good buys. <laughs> so when the market goes up and you, and you compare the ones that you bought and what you bought – what you paid for them to deals in the market now, it's like, oh, man, we got such a good deal in those. It's tough to find. You know. Yeah, we can't duplicate the deals that we've done down there already. We're having a hard time doing that. But we went down in – I found the town – of, of Sarasota in February of 2012, and it's just kind of comical that uh, if you look at the chart of real estate prices in February of 2012 is when you had the first upward surge. So it was almost like a, I don't know what you call that. It's a bounce. It's a, it, it's that's when we saw the first bounce. Mm -hmm. So I went there at the perfect time, but it took us another six to eight months before we made our first purchase because we had to learn that whole economy down there and everything that was going on down there. Now we've, we have we own a lot of property down there, but uh, now we're faced with a completely different thing, and we are thinking of selling some pieces down there because we don't want to get – we don't want to give back all the equity that we've accrued, and that's really what we've got right now. We've gotten – uh, well over a million dollars in equity from the deals that we've done down there. Also, if there's going to be a 30% correction in the next year or so, uh, you could sell sell a few pieces and at least capitalize on that 30%. Or you could sell a few pieces and take the money you earned from it and, Wait and, for the and correction. roll it into some of your other properties to pay down the notes to make them more viable if there is a crash coming that you're not going to be stuck with high payments. So there's some things you can do. I always say that you know our business is a counter economic business. When when things when the economy's down, that's when we love it because we can buy and get good deals. When there, when it's a buyer's market, when economy everybody's you know when, when there's uh, when there's blood in the streets, <laughs> it's a good time to buy. You know, unfortunately yeah. for the economy, that happens from time to time. Yeah. The biggest question I probably got asked, um, you know, years ago is, you know, I would meet somebody and I'd be like, oh, I'm a real estate investor. And they'd be like, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry to hear that because that was when everything was down and we were in the in the doldrums. But I was like, you know, if you know how to buy correctly, 
you just shift the way you you buy and sell. You know, in in a downtime, you buy lower and you sell lower. In an uptime, you buy higher, but you're also selling higher. So you just have to change your model, you know, to to shift with those times. But it doesn't necessarily mean that oh, the market's down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, and you must be doing horrible. Well, I'll tell you, here's an interesting thing to think about a hypothetical situation. If if I could go back in time, I'll tell you what I'd do differently. I wouldn't have sold. I sold about half of my portfolio off, and I bought this huge office building, which I still own today, and it's a very successful building. But what I would have done if I could go back in time – Is that the Maroon place? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I still own it today. It's my biggest property. It's my, my greatest property. It makes the most money, everything else. But if I could go back in time, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd sell every single thing I own. I'd, uh, I'd walk away with some very big checks. I'd have to pay the government some very big uh, tax checks. And I would have gone fishing for a few years and then came back and started buying again. I would have taken a few years off. I would have had to because during the years of, say, 08, 09, 2010, these were not good years to buy anything. You're, you're going to be hard-pressed to find anybody who made great real estate deals during those years because no matter what you bought, you know, it probably was still in a, in a, in a rapid decline. And then come back, if you came back with millions of dollars to buy with in 2011 and, and, or whatever the year was, it was the right time to buy, ye, you'd make some pretty amazing deals. Yeah. There was an awful lot of blood in the streets, that's for sure. I'll tell you what, just, just buying the um, buying properties that are, have multiple exit strategies is a good way to mitigate some of that risk. It, when you the people yeah. that I know that got clobbered in the downturn were people that bought these McMansions that they were building on spec or they were re- renovating these four or five hundred thousand dollar properties, and the only thing to do with those is to sell them. What else are you going to do? Yeah, you can't make any sense as a rental market. So if you're if you're buying an, a first time home buyer house, you have multiple options. You could sell it. If it doesn't sell, you could rent it. We do, we like to do rent to owns. You could do a rent to own on it if you need to squeeze a little more cash flow out of it, get some down money back. Uh, that you put into the property. So I, I always recommend people stay with those first time home buyer bread and butter houses. And I, I didn't get affected by the downturn too much because I just keep the properties right through the downturn. And people say, well, geez, I owe more than my house is worth. Okay. Well, you're comfortable with the payment. Yes. Okay. Right. Well then don't worry about it. Just stay there. If as long as you're comfortable with the payment, you like where you live, who cares if you owe more than your house is worth? I mean, it's not ideal, but at the same time, I mean, what's, what's the big deal? Our, as long as our tenants can cover those payments, the houses are paying for themselves. Let them let them come back. Just I was like. involved in in a lot of different aspects of real estate back back when that crash happened, and I got caught with my pants down. And we had two of those new spec properties when when the downturn happened, and uh, there was a couple month couple month delay in that property being done. And if we didn't have that two three month delay in the property being done, it would have meant we made hundreds of thousands of dollars. But because the delay happened. It, it seemed to be like our property was done as soon as that downturn, as soon as the scare started happening, and we ended up losing hundreds of thousands of dollars on that. So you got so, caught with your pants down. Is that yeah, indecent, real, down. indecent real estate <laughs> exposure? Well, I, I, it like, hurt. I look back, and I, I didn't get caught with my pants down. My pants were buckled on tight, okay? But but I also agree that I got a little bit lucky by not getting caught. I was involved in some very big, crazy deals. You know, you can read about an addicted to real estate. I was, I bought a building that I had under contract, which I was going to have like, uh, you know, four point two million dollars into it, losing a thousand dollars a day the day it opened. And uh, I still think it would have worked, but I would have been better off not doing such an aggressive move at that moment. Long story, what happened to it? So, the point to all this is, pay attention to the market, know what you're doing, and don't let it happen again. And if you, if you're smart and you, and you educate yourself on the Factors that control the market, you'll be able to see it coming before it does. So stick around. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the secrets of the real estate business. We're going to share them with you. So make sure you listen in and come and get it. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. 
At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, by investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. Hi, I'm Larry Steinas, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio, and here we are talking about real estate investing secrets, and Phil had ended that with come and get it, so come and get it means you need to come visit us to get all these secrets, but we're going to share some of those topics with you today, and uh, some of the ways that we do deals and some of the uh, things that you can do to get started and really have an edge on the business over the other investors. So, okay. Well, uh, one of the things that that I love about this business and the reason that I'm addicted to it is because you can earn your living working for yourself, which is a wonderful thing. For those of you who have jobs and you're not happy in your job and you're looking to get out of that J-O-B, just over broke scenario, working for yourself is an amazing thing. I always tell new investors when they come to my meetings, is let's imagine that you worked for yourself as a real estate investor your whole life and you made just enough money to get by and you made just enough money to provide for your family. Um, And you did that your whole life. Now, first of all, that scenario is almost impossible because it's almost impossible not to become a multimillionaire in a real estate business if you did it your whole life. But let's just say that that did happen. And you got to work for yourself your whole life. I always tell people that alone would be worth doing. Being your own boss, being your own man, being your own woman, being in control of your own destiny, that is an amazing thing. And that is one of the reasons I love this business. But the other reason I love it is because it's almost impossible for that to happen. You buy a piece of real estate for whatever, 50 grand, 80 grand, 100 grand. You sit on it for 15 years. Before you know it, you got $150,000 worth of equity in that one property. Do that 10, 20 times over and you're a millionaire pretty easily, a multi-millionaire fairly easily. A funny thing, people go, well, that's going to take 15 years. Yeah, well, guess what, buddy? Life changes pretty fast. So I don't even know where the last 15 years in my life went. My kid is 18 and I, it seems like he was just born the other day. So life goes by pretty quick. And before you know it, You're going to end up building wealth strictly by being in this business. So what we do is we buy lots of properties and we wholesale 
lots of properties because we need income to live off of and to provide for our families. So we make plenty of income in this business by doing flips, by finding deals for 120 grand and selling them to another real estate investor for 150 grand, and we make a $30,000 wholesale fee or wholesaling to yourself, which is another technique that we do. We've got my favorite one. Yeah, yeah, I like that one too. We we love it. It's it's one of the best ways to to build wealth and to get paid. So we have strategies where you can build wealth. We have strategies where you can get paid, and we have strategies where you can get paid and build wealth at the same time. You know, I do a lot of wholesaling, um, but really the real power of this for me is, and I, I tell this to people all the time, it's like, okay, I could have a job, right? And I rely on somebody else. I have to get up. I have to show up. And, and I get a paycheck from that, which is a nice thing to be able to rely on, like just a show up and I get a paycheck. But there's a real power. There's a, there's this crazy power in knowing that you have this knowledge in your head that you can, you can just do it for yourself. You don't have to rely on anybody for, for anything. I, like I tell them, I, you could drop me off in my underwear. In another state with a hundred bucks. Well, you already got caught with your pants yeah, down. Yeah, I know. So I'm, 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 I have this whole thing about getting caught with my pants down, being in my underwear. Now you're doing it voluntarily. Right. But so here I am, dropped off anywhere in the country in my underwear with a hundred dollars, and my brain has the ability to kind of say, "Let me create income for myself, and I could survive." And that's a super powerful confidence to know and to have. To not have to rely on anybody else for, for that. So, um, so tell me a little bit about your, your current wholesaling business. Where do you do it? How do people uh, get in touch with you? That kind of thing. Well, I do I do a lot of wholesaling, and I've sort of gotten away from the wholesaling piece where I'm doing a little bit more of rehabbing. But the wholesaling is a, is a tried and true um, method. I think it's the quickest, easiest, fastest return on your money with the least amount of risk. So to go back to that one question we had earlier about what's one of the the first things you should do as an investor, I really feel like wholesaling, wholesaling, wholesaling would be one of the ways that I would suggest for somebody to get involved because there's there's little risk and you can get involved with somebody else who's doing it and, and start to learn that process and if if you get caught with your pants down again, right? You do something incorrectly. Let's say you uh, figure out the numbers of a property incorrectly. We all make mistakes, but if you do make one, it's very very minor risk to it. If you had to kind of let that deal go, you're only out. In in my case, the way I do it is about a hundred bucks. That's also assuming that the person's goal is income, because it could be that they want they don't want to replace their job. They absolutely love their job, and for them, maybe buy and hold is. A better strategy versus wholesaling because let's say somebody's got, you know, I have a friend that sells medical equipment. He makes three hundred thousand dollars a year. He mm-hmm. absolutely loves it. It's not even a job to him. It's just he sits there in the operating room and says, "Here, put this in his heart," and he gets mm-hmm. paid three hundred grand to the, do that. The now, buy and hold is amazing. You know? Now for him, he doesn't need income, so you have to always look at everybody's goals and say, "Okay, well that person needs. They want to accumulate and build wealth." So maybe they should just take that chunk of cash, extra cash that they're making in their income and throw it down on a bunch of down payments on real estate. So it all depends on where you're at in your business. And that's why I'm starting to look into more of the the holding stuff, you know, uh, where I'm actually going to control those properties for a long term. The benefit of the the wholesaling is that low risk in the beginning – with that low risk, you can really learn the process of how to do a deal, how you market for a deal, how you find those sellers, how you get them to talk to you, how you can make offers to them. And then once you make offers, how you do your contract, okay? And then after the contract, the marketing to sell the property, then there's the title work. So there's so many pieces of the system in the process that you will learn through wholesaling. And then so... Once you've got that down, you've done one or two wholesale deals, you've made some money in your pocket, then you have that confidence to move forward and say, you know what, now I'm going to keep these deals, and you know what you're doing. You feel confident about it. You've gone through the learning curve, and it just makes the whole process a lot, I think, cleaner. So, and, so uh, where do you do your most of your wholesale deals? I do about 80% of my wholesale deals are in Philadelphia, and 20% are in Delaware County. What particular neighborhoods? You're in South Philly? Or? Oh, that's a, that's a great question there. I, I do a lot in West Philly, like West Oak Lane, 
uh, some North Philly stuff, and it usually seems to come in batches. If I'm doing a house and I'm in West Philly, um, you know, maybe I'm fixing that house up a little bit or marketing that house to wholesale it. It seems like a lot of other things come at me while I'm in West Philly, and then I end up buying two or three or four deals in West Philly, and then I get one over in Northeast, and then I buy that one out there, or I wholesale that, and then two or three or four deals in the Northeast come to me. So it seems to be cyclical and in batches. Yeah, that's interesting. But I like the advice that you, you give people about, about wholesaling. I do it a little bit different. When I get a newbie in front of me and I'm teaching them the business, what I tell them is – I, I definitely would tell them to go out and do wholesaling deals, especially if they need money right now. But what I, I break it down even further than that. I say, I say there's three ways you can get paid in this business. One, find the deal. Two, find the money. Three, find the buyer. But the easiest and best way is to find a deal and control it. So I, we turn them into bird dogs. You know, we say, mm-hmm. oh, look, I don't care if you're going to drop letters, if you're going to put uh, uh, door hangers, if you're going to go around and knock on doors. Take your pick. But go out and get a deal and control that deal and bring it back. The reason I tell them that is because in a wholesale deal, they've got to find the deal. They've got to lock it up, and then they've got to find somebody to buy it, and they've got to sell it to that person. That's a whole lot of steps for a newbie. I say, look, you just go find the deal. Lock it up. And if that's all you did, okay, you're, you're gonna, you control the deal. You're going to yep. be able to earn money or earn a piece of the deal if we're going to keep it and they bring it to us and we blast it out to our list of massive list of buyers that addicted to real estate has and we find the buyer for them and then we just partner on it i um i think that's 180 percent that would be the way i would say to do it because technically when i'm saying go out and do a wholesale you are you're a glorified bird dog at that point where i want you to find the deal and then take it to somebody. Negotiate it first, right? You well, have to negotiate yeah, the deal. Not not even always negotiate it, right? If you don't have that experience, but it's all about taking it to somebody who's already done that successfully. And that's exactly what you said, Phil. Find the deal, whether you negotiate it or not, bring it to me, but have them be part of that deal. And that's how they can learn. They learn through you the proper ways to do the I'm contracts. just trying to make it even easier for them. So look, yeah. all you got to do is go find one deal. Yeah. Bring it back. You're going to get paid. Yeah, everybody knows Aunt Edna down the street who's thinking about selling their home. You know, you can't always know it, that there's the Aunt Edna down the street. So that person brings you the information. Hey, Aunt Edna's thinking about selling her home. That's the start of it. You could learn this whole process by working with you as you go through these steps, as you negotiate the deal, and that person can become stronger in the process and make a chunk of that of that deal. So one of the things I want to talk about with this topic which is called Giving Away Real Estate Investing Business Secrets. I really am going to be giving out a ton of business secrets about this business. Coming up, we have – in summertime, real estate meeting attendance usually drops off of a cliff. So we don't do a whole lot of big business meetings in the summertime. But once September rolls around, we've got some very big things planned. Now, I don't want to give you the specific dates right now and tell you where we're going to be, but we are going to have a whole group of different meetings in September and in October. If you want to learn this business, if you're listening to this show right now and you're hearing something that resonates with you and you're thinking to yourself, I'd like to hang around with these guys that are addicted to real estate, well, then we've got the way for you to do that. And the reason I wrote on this topic, come and get it, is because you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to come to a meeting. You can't just listen to a a radio show on YouTube or a radio show on WWDB 860 AM. You're going to have to come out to a meeting. But at these meetings, we're going to give you something that is so valuable, it's going to change your life. If you're willing to do the work necessary to make your real estate investing career explode, We're the guys that are going to help you do it, and it's coming up soon. The best way, as I've repeated multiple times, to know about these meetings, to be a part of these meetings, to get an invitation to come to these meetings, is visit addictedtorealestate.com with the number two and put your name and email address in there. And I will surely send you an invitation to these meetings as they come. You can pick the one that's closest to you. You can pick the one that speaks to you when you read the topic of what it's going to be about. And I'm also going to send you, don't forget, a way to get a copy of my new book, How to Buy Houses with None of Your Own Money, for free. 
I can't wait. This next meeting is uh, – the, the next series of meetings is going to be so powerful. We've never done such a rapid-fire series of meetings ever. We usually just do one a month, but we're going we're gonna to really – uh, do a lot of meetings in different areas to try to get exposure to to a lot of people to to be able to come out and and meet us. And what we find is that if we have our meeting at one place every time, we get a certain amount of people. But if we move the meeting around here and there, we pick up people so that the next meeting they'll be willing to drive a little bit further to come hear us speak. Mm-hmm. Because we've had people come to our meeting. Just the last meeting we had at Maggie's. You were there, Steve. Mm-hmm. The last meeting we had at Maggie's on the waterfront, w- people came up to us and said that, Man, I wish I found you guys first. I went through all these other things. It's really nice to have a local group of guys that know the business inside and out that could really teach us. We have apprentices in the office that come and, and just look over our shoulder on appointments that we go to, on deals that we run through the office, so they can see how these deals work and what we're doing. Yeah, and, and the benefit of, I think, one of these things is, is by helping other people, like we – help ourselves you know so it's not just one-sided oh we're going to teach you all this stuff and we're just you know doing it like mother Teresa or anything like that it's by networking and becoming part of helping somebody else you guys synergize you can work together on deals and we can do better and you can do better and that's the benefit of of really these meetings I didn't know mother Teresa was in real estate no she she, no? she got into it towards the end is she a wholesaler or a flipper <laughs> or what? a little bit of rehabbing <laughs> You know, if you're uh, if you're somebody who's in the real estate related industry, okay, and you know what that is, all right. We're always looking for sponsors. If you'd like to be a guest on this show, if you'd like to be a sponsor on this show, you think that you have something that you can offer our listeners who are real estate investors, real estate agents, and real estate realtors. You can always give us a call two six seven nine eight eight two thousand. We'd love to talk to you about being a sponsor on the show, possibly giving you a guest spot. And, and and let's discuss what it is that you have to offer. So that's 267-988-2000. I've also mentioned many times on this show, put your name and email address on, on our mailing list at addictedtorealestate.com. There's a lot of great information. You don't even need to wait for me to send you an email because there's a lot of great information there. Just go to the blog tab. You can see some of the wholesale deals we put out. You can see some of the uh, uh, videos of the meetings that we have. And we have a lot of exciting things coming up in the next 90 days that you're going to want to be a part of. And listen to this show every Thursday at 3 on WWDB. That's 860 AM. And we're also rebroadcasting at... 6 p.m. on Saturdays, too. So if it's better for you to listen to it on a Saturday, if you're at that J-O-B and they won't let you listen to the radio, Saturdays at 6 at WWDB. And you can listen to us there as well and on WWDBAM.com. And don't forget that if uh, you're interested in getting your real estate license, we pay for agents to get their real estate license. That's correct. You heard me clearly. We pay for your license. Give us a call, 267-988-2000, and we'll tell you all about that program. You've been listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Take care.